Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting to you the solution to question number 8 from the Park Practice Test for Algebra 2, years 2014-2015. Uh, the question says, given that x is greater than 0, which expression is equivalent to 5 square root xy plus 25 root x? And as I scan through the answer choices, I see that there are a lot of them that have these fractional exponents. So I want to do a little bit of a warm-up exercise, which will only take a minute or so, to review some of those ideas of converting from radicals to fractional exponents. So let's take a look at number one, which says the square root of a. And the square root of a is the same thing as a to what power? Well, if you said a to the one-half power, then you're correct. Now, the reason it's 1 half is the power of a here is 1. And when you take a square root, there's an implied 2 here. So it's really this number over that number. Now, having said that, the nth root of b to the m would be b to what power? If you guessed m over n, then you're correct. And one more for good luck. The cube root of c to the fifth can be rewritten as c to the 5 thirds power. Now the other uh, skill that I want you to know for this problem is that if you have multiple factors being raised to a power, then this power will affect both of these factors. So de, the product de to the power of x can be rewritten as d to the x, e to the x. So keeping all these skills in mind, let's take a look at the actual problem. So we start with 5 root xy plus 25 root x. The first thing that I'm going to do is transition this expression into fractional exponents. So I'm going to say 5, and then we've got xy as a chunk, but it's being square rooted. And because it's being square rooted, I know that it's going to be raised to the 1 half power. And then I've got plus 25. And then I've got an x. And that x is also being square rooted, just the x. So that's going to be x to the 1 half power. Now, in our first term, I've got a product being raised to a power. Just like here, I had a product being raised to a power. So I'm going to say 5 times x to the 1 half y to the 1 half both the x and the y are going to feel the effect of that power of 1 half. Now as I scan my answer choices, nothing looks exactly like this. But there are a few things that have these 1 half powers all over the place. Um, choice D does, choice B does, and even choice C does as well. I'm not I'm thinking that the negative exponents are not the direction to go here because that hasn't really become apparent at any spot. So I'm going to most likely eliminate that. Now what I can do just to go further with this and hopefully get it to look like one of my answer choices is implement a factoring technique, GCF. Now GCF stands for greatest common factor. And there is something that I could take out from, from both of these terms. I could take out a 5x to the 1 half because that's in both of these terms. So I'm going to take out 5x to the 1 half. And remember, to take out means to divide. And if I divide out a 5x to the 1 half from the first term, I'm left with y to the 1 half. And if I take out a 5x to the 1 half from the second term, I'm left with just 5. And this is very promising because this is one of our answer choices. This is actually answer choice D. Now, if that transition from the, the third or the, the second to the third step was a little bit fuzzy for you, just to buy into it a little more, you could actually distribute this through. 5x to the 1 half times y to the 1 half would be 5x to the 1 half y to the 1 half. And 5x to the 1 half times 5 would be 25x to the 1 half. So maybe just going through that will help you at least understand why I put the answer that I did. So the final answer here is answer choice D. And it required a combination of knowing fractional exponents and this uh, warm-up problem number four, that multiple factors being raised to a power, each of them will feel the effect of that power.